For more insight into Turkey's armed forces and the effect of July's failed coup, let me turn to Joshua Walker. He's a transatlantic fellow at the German Marshall Fund and nonpartisan think tank here in Washington, D.C. Josh, welcome. Thanks for having me. So what is behind the drop in recruitment? Natalie Carney alluded to some of the reasons. How much did the July failed coup attempt has something to do with it? I mean, is, it, is there some fear among these young people that we don't want to go in the army because we could get arrested, we could be thrown in jail? I think it's even more basic than that. I think July 15th has a lot to do with this. Even before July 15th, there was tension in terms of between the civil and the military side. July 15th brought to the forefront the role that the military historically has always had, but in the most negative way possible. And as you saw, the average Turkish citizen became a soldier on that night. And I think what's interesting is Turkey is built up of a conscript army, but also a professional army. So as Turkey continues to be in a difficult neighborhood, the second largest military in NATO, the way in which this army changes and is, uh, you know, professionalized will be key for the entire neighborhood for Turkey as it continues to try to stabilize this region. So is this a problem for Turkey? You know, today happens to be the 78th anniversary of Mustafa Kemal Ataturk, the founder of the modern republic. He's the reason that the military has always been the highest trusted institution in Turkey. That is still holding, but there has become this feeling that maybe uh, going into the military is not the only way to serve. And so I think the question is going to be, the solution is how do you find a way to have people having a good life and serving with honor and also being able to have people that use the military to kind of get ahead. And I think the recruitment videos that you saw in that clip are going to continue to become an important part. Up until now, business has always played second. Now maybe the business community is beginning to equal itself out with the military. You lived in Turkey for some time. So when you talk to young people, or when you lived there and you did talk to young people there, what are some of their grievances that they have? What is preventing them right now from joining the military. Well, you know, I think as the clips show, there is a very immense sense of pride in nationalism. Every Turkish man is proud to serve in the military. But when they saw the events of July 15th, they were not proud of that military. And it was very clear from the very beginning that that did not represent the military. But how do you basically have the average person understand that? And now with the uptick in violence, not only from Syria and Iraq, but also in the southeastern part of Turkey, with this simmering Kurdish conflict that we're seeing, um, there is going to be a feeling that maybe that's not what, we, what it once was cracked up to be in terms of of the military. You mentioned the promotional video that they're making to kind of encourage recruitment. Do you think tactics like that work? I do think in Turkey, social media, and I do think that being able to strike at people's pride and also uh, nationalism and patriotism works, particularly on days like today and any other national holidays there are there. So I think it's a step in the right direction. Traditionally, the Turkish military is not very good at their public diplomacy campaign. They haven't had to be good because they were the most trusted. Everybody wanted to be a military officer. They had the pick of the crop in some ways. Now they have to compete with other sectors of Turkish society. So the question is, can you keep uh, the very best and the brightest continuing focus on it, even as you're eliminating uh, the entire cadres of people. Um, it used to be serving in the military came with prestige, it came with guaranteed salary, good training, and for some it even led to a career. Is it still the same way, Josh? You know, it's interesting. I think the answer, the short answer is yes, but. Uh, yes, it is still an easy way to advance if you are a, a villager who doesn't have very much. The military will take care of you and your family moving forward. But once you're in the military, how do you advance? What are the ways there? Now there's a suspicion and a pall that's been cast over it. And as people have been eliminated because of their uh, involvement in the July 15th coup, uh, how do the conscripts, how do the professionals work together to advance? And what do you do when you have this, such a large uh, military that's working in so many different theaters in its neighborhood without the level of leadership because so much of that leadership was implicated in that coup, and what other operations can they have? And one more point, uh, it used to be the military was the way you could have international exchanges. They could come to America, they could go to other NATO uh, countries. A lot of those individuals were the very ones that were implicated in that coup. So as Turkey begins to look more inwardly focused on this, and the military continues to be its point of pride, can you balance the need for this military to be a sovereign nation and its international relations at the same time? Those are good questions. We'll pick them up next time. Joshua Walker, thank you so much. A pleasure, sir. Thank